Hello everyone, my name is Walid Balid. Welcome to session number four of the printed circuit boards design principles and practices using Altium Designer. In our session today, uh, we will have an overview about the PCB design and manufacturing process. Then we need to dive into the schematic design workflow in Altium Designer specifically and the layout design workflow in Altium Designer as well. Next, we will be using Altium Designer to create our first project from A to Z. And this project in which we are going to create the schematic and layout for the famous and very simple a stable multi-vibrator uh, design using two transistors. Now, the first project we will be uh, using only through whole components. The second one, we are going to replace the through hole components by a surface mount uh, components. Now, we discussed that earlier, uh, through hole bars are no longer very common in circuit design unless we are designing a power electronics part or we have a specific connectors or bulky components such as transformers or uh, power transistor, etc. But it's good practice for you to have some experience with using through-hole parts, even for a very simple uh, printed circuit board. And in the future, or in the next sessions, we are going to design our circuits using um, surface mount parts, uh, but we will be using some connectors that are through-hole. So let's get started. So the PCB design and manufacturing process is basically composed of four steps. The first one in which you start designing um, the schematic uh, circuit diagram. Now, some software or ECAD tools such as ORCAD, they call it uh, capture design or design capture. Uh, Al uh, Altium designer, they use the term schematic document or schematic sheet. Once the schematic is done, you transfer uh, the electrical com connections or nets component into the layout where you have the form factor of these components. You have the physical components, the form factor of the physical component, and you start doing physical uh, connections between these components or the bins of these components. Once the layout is finished, you generate something called fabrication files, or they call it, if you hear, if you hear the um, term Gerber files, uh, and these Gerber files will be sent to the BCB fabrication house or BCB fabrication factory where they will create films, layout films to produce the bare boards. Uh, they call it bare boards because it's just the printed circuit boards with no components on it. Now, once the bare boards are uh, fabricated, you send them to the assembly house. The assembly house will do sourcing for the component or you can source the component by yourself and then send this component along with the bare boards to the assembly house in addition to the bill of material and another file that are very important called a uh, placement file or mounting file and they will do start doing the assembly for the boards before they ship it back to you now this is basically the whole process so if you are going to create a board we will create the schematic then once the schematic is complete, uh, transfer uh, the design into the layout. In the layout, we connect everything together, generate the fabrication file, send the fabrication files to the fabrication company. The fabrication company will produce the bare boards, and then the boards are ready for assembly in the assembly house. They need to source the component, electronic components, and follow the location in the mounting file or placement file. Now. The question here, uh, someone might ask, is there a systematic process or workflow I can follow in, to design schematic uh, or design a layout in Altium Designer? Now, the answer, sir, the answer for this question is no. There is no standard that uh, define a workflow or process to follow an Altium Designer. However, there are best practices and the workflow we see on this slide is just based on best practices and my own experience. So basically, 
when we talk about schematic design and we reach this um, step in, in, in the process after uh, we completed the specifications of the product, uh, component selections and requirements, etc. as we discussed in session number one. So, so the board design is part of long processes and we are going to discuss only the BCB design in, in this session. So we have the design concept and specifications. Based on the design concept and specification here, which is the input for our circuit design, we start by creating a BCB project in Altium Designer. The BCB project is like a container that include all different documents in Altium Designer. These documents we discussed in our in session three. So we have schematic document, we have BCB document, etc. Now the first thing we need to add into Altium Designer is the schematic sheets. We may need only one schematic sheet or we may need several schematic sheets depending on how big the project is. Next, we start building the design hierarchy, uh, which is a very important step. If your project is or your circuit is really big and you have multiple uh, subsystems or multiple sections in your design, it's better to divide the project into subsystems. For instance, if you have uh, if you are designing a sensor and this sensor has a data acquisition unit, and also has processing unit, has communication units. It's better to have every single unit in specific, on, on a specific or on a separate schematic sheet. In this case, these schematic sheets can be reusable and your whole design can be reusable. If you design another project with similar functionality, all that you need is to copy the re relevant a schematic sheet into your new project and use it again. We will talk into about this in more details in our next session, but just an overview or a quick quick point about it. And uh, make sure to simplify your design and make it reusable. Now, the next step is to start searching for the component in Altium Designer. Uh, so there are multiple sources for components in Altium Designer. One of them is the integrated libraries that are locally installed. The second one uh, is the cloud libraries exist on your company cloud and connected to Altium Designer via Altium Concord Pro. The third one, which is uh, which we are gonna use today, is the manufacturer part search, which is new. Um, features or a new panel added in Altium Designer 19 and it's very powerful. Now, what if the component doesn't exist in any of the components repositories? So you need to create this component in this case and you need to go to something called Components Editor where you create the schematic symbol and the layout for to print and link these together and generate new components. And this is... Um, Something we will talk about in specific sessions. We need a whole session to talk about component uh, creation in Altium Designer. Now, once um, you find these components, you start placing them on the schematic sheets until you place all the components and you start wiring these components based on your circuit diagram. Now, you should have at this point some simulation or, or draft or something to show the circuit uh, diagram for your project and you might be looking into application notes data sheet of the components uh, draft sheet etc we will have some some simple example for for our project today where we have simulation in lt spice so you start wiring these components together uh, depending on your circuit diagram next you start placing nets and directives. Nets, it's like labels to identify the nets and give them real name. Directives, also we'll talk about them in details. We have several directors. One of the direct, uh, directives, one of the directives is no error pin. For instance, if you have pin on a chip and this pin is not used, 
you need to put a directive on this pin that this to identify that the pin is not used for the electrical rule check to ignore it during the uh, checkup for for any errors electrical error now the next step is to annotate the design basically annotating the design is um, giving a unique designator or identifier for every single component on the board like if you have resistors so the resistors will have R1, R2, R3 R is the designator for resistor C is the designator for capacitors and so on so we annotate the design uh, and it's uh, just a simple click uh, it's one click you the design will be annotated automatically and the next step is to set up the project options the project options include the error checking parameters a connectivity matrix class generator the uh, comparator setup the eco generation the output pass and connectivity options multi-channel naming format default print setup, search paths, the project level parameters, etc. So we will see all these in, in, in details later on, but at one point you need to set up the project option. And this is where before you compile and verify the design. So basically compiling the design is it's where the software will start building a netlist for every or each schematic sheet and every single component on, on your schematic sheet. And then create the sheet to sheet connectivity and build the unified data model. And these netlist and unified data models will be used in the layout later to board all the components from schematic or and to lay out and start connecting them. Then the compiler also will analyze the complete design to check for drafting and electrical errors and that is verifying the design which is a key aspect to be confident that the components are correct the connections are correct and everything as it should be once the schematic design is compiled and verified then now you are ready to transfer or synchronize your design into the PCB layout but you need to be very careful about it most of the designers when the schematic is done they send the whole design into the layout right away but you need to hold on on that and start by setting up your layout environment before transferring any component from the schematic to the layout especially the grid and we will talk about that in the next slide so the for workflow in Altium Designer, as you can see in here, we'll start by defining the board shape. The board shape is basically the mechanical requirement. What is the shape of the board? What is the dimension of the board, etc. So this is the first thing you need to do. Then configure the board properties. So board properties such as the units you are going to use in the layout editor, are you going to use the imperial or metric? Also, you need to select a suitable snap grid where the component will snap into the grid. And also we'll talk about that in details. And then you need to set up the grid, the best grid you can use based on uh, the component you have in your design and also use uh, or set up the guide manager. Next, you need to set the board origin. What is or where is the point that has coordination 0, 0 on your BCB? It's always the bottom left point. So you have changed or you have defined the board shape on the, in the first step. Now you need to set your board origin uh, based on the new shape. Now, after this, you need to now define the design rules. What is the thickness or the minimum uh, thickness of the traces? What is the maximum thickness of the traces? What is the via size? What are the spacings between the traces, etc.? If you have differential pairs, you need to specify the design rules. If you have power planes, also you need to specify the design rules. And the design rules in Altium Designer are pretty complex. And we will talk about these over multiple sessions 
uh, in in real project because it's hard to just start explaining these without any real hands-on or, or uh, usable case for 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 these uh, rules. Now at this point, before start setting the design rules, you transfer your design from schematic to the layout. Most people, once they are done in the schematic in here, they transfer it right away to the layout. Before you do that, you need to set all these three steps. And most importantly is to configure your port properties. Because basically, if you transfer, let's say if you transfer your uh, design at this point and the finest component pitch you have on here is, let's say, 10 mil. And after tra you transferred your design into here, you came here and you set your grid into 14 mil, for instance. Now you have problem in placing your components on, on the grid. And you will get an error, it says off grid uh, component, and you need to align that again. So that's why bef after you set your board origin, you can now transfer the design from schematic into the layout where you need information from the schematic or transfer design to set your rules. Specifically, if you have customized rules where you specify specific uh, trace weights for specific net. And the information about the nets or net list will be transferred once you do a sync between the schematic and the layout at this point. And we will see that as well in the next when we do the project in the next minutes. Now, the next step is to start planning the components placement. Now, there is a saying that PCB design is 90% placement and 10% routing. While you could argue about the percentage of each placement and routing, it is generally accepted that good component placement is critical for good board design. Keep in mind that you may need to tune the placement as you route as well. That's why before start routing, you need to look, even before start placing component on board, you need to plan for that. Generally speaking, if you have connectors or components that are accessed by users like switches, indicators, connectors, etc., these usually are on or are placed on the edge of the board. Take for example a BC motherboard, for instance. You will see all the connectors uh, are placed on the edge of the board, where these are accessible for the user from the back side of, of the laptop or BC. Now, these are the most critical components in your design, and you need to start by uh, planning a place for this connector before any other connector. Now, the next a critical component on, you, on your board is the core component. If you have a microprocessor or you have a microcontroller where you have so many bins connect with peripherals all over the board. Now, this is a core component or the heart of your board. You need also to plan a place for this component where all the peripherals can connect with it very easily without complicating your routing uh, paths. Now, while you are planning all that, you need to understand the signaling on your board. Now, do you have analog signal? Do you have a digital signal? Do you have mixed signal, analog digital? or you have high power signal, you have noisy signals, etc. Now, if you have different type of signals, you need to understand the placement, the best placement for these based on the best practices. Usually, if you have high speed design where you are using high speed components, you need to look at the application note and the layout guidance for these components where they will explain or the manufacturer for these components will explain in details the best routing method for these components and how you can plan uh, the routes for, for these components as well. Generally speaking, if you have analog signals and digital signals, you need to make sure that these signals are separated. Don't mix them together. And also you need to make sure that your analog sources are as close as possible to your power source. If you have a differential pair signals, for instance, you need to make sure that you will leave 
space enough space on the board for uh, links matching or links tuning if you have a data buses for instance 8 bit or 16 bit 24 bit you need to start routing these first because they are very critical in the design and they are very critical for signal integrity buses comes first not nothing should uh, disconnect the continuity of bus traces on the board so all these we will learn about them in details later on but this is just an overview about the planning component placement before you start placing any component on board now the next is to position the components now you have a full um, uh, overview about the best placement for this component and you have tried to do that you manipulated this component on the board now you start positioning this component based on your draft or initial thoughts about component placement now once a positioning the component is done and you will need to go over and over and move the component from place to place to have the less or the minimum overlapping between the nets where the routing will be uh, very simple and easy to do now once the uh, component are positions in place you need now to plan routing similar to a plan component placement also you need to plan routing before start routing now most of the bcb design engineers neglect plan compo planning components placement and uh, planning routing as well which are very critical and they will end it up by redoing the design again and again so they will route and unroute try to move the component and route again if you have a good planning from the beginning then you don't have to do it uh, several times to get it right even if it's very complex board now planning routing is basically where you need to put the high signal on which layer where you need to put the analog signals and where you need to route your buses where you need to route your differential pairs where you need to keep the space for par, uh, uh, routing differential pairs and so on now at this point someone might ask okay how can i know how many layers um, i need for my design that's why the next step comes design layer stack why didn't we put design layer stack after the set design rules I can put it in here and most people will start doing design layer stack at this point but at this point you might set uh, your board let's say for eight layers and you might start placing the component then routing and you will recognize at this point oh eight layers is not enough and in this case you need to increase the layers and you might be ended up doing uh, rerouting for so many traces and uh, spend more time on the board now if you blend eight layers and then you recognize that you can use six layers also it might be some some issues with power planes and so on now that's when you need to have design layer stack after planning component placement and finishing the component placement and planning the routing and before doing the routing now at this point you have a very clear idea about how many layers you will need to route your board given that you have uh, awareness about uh, the routing you need and the signaling as well and you have placed your component in the best way you can do so you design your layer stack at this point and the next step is to do a fan out now if you have a bga component or you have a complex component with fine bitches the first thing you need to do is to fan out these pins especially the power pins we will have project uh, with a complex chips to do fan out and we'll talk about this in place but for our project today we don't really have a fan out because we are going to use very simple components discrete components basically transistors capacitor resistors and leds so it's very simple we don't have a fan out but we need to have a full workflow in 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 our diagram in here so the next step is to start routing now after all this planning and all this configuration now you are ready to route your circuit and then during this routing you need to consider you might be uh, doing rerouting or refining for uh, the routing on the board and you might also have to move some components uh, a little bit to improve your routing 
when the routing is complete, you need to add a copper cores for the ground, for the power to improve signal integrity and to reduce the impedance for transmission lines and we will talk about this in place as well these are all uh, complex topics we will cover during this this course but we need to move slowly and put you on track so you get started and start designing your own board so next you do via stitching and also via stitching is basically stitches um uh nets such as ground plane uh, planes so if you have two or three ground plane on your design so you can st stitch them uh, with vs to reduce the current loop and also to improve uh, signal integrity also we'll talk about that then you need to reposition the designator the designator is the net labels for the component if you have a physical resistor let's say r1 r1 the label for this component is called designator so you need to move it close to the component so it will be printed on the silk screen layer in a nice way next if you have any other notes you want to put on the board you can place these notes at this point such as if you have you want to put the serial number for the board or if you put you want to put some of the logos for the compliance rohs for instance or ce or fcc whatever you want to put if you want to put your name on it or your company logo you can put it at this point it's called other notes and these notes will be printed on the silk screen layer Next, you do the design rule check where you make sure that your design meets all the rules specified in the design rules and you don't have any problem in your design. So you will get some issues in here and you start fixing these until no error is generated. Now, at this point, once all the errors are cleared or corrected, then you are ready to generate something called manufacturing outputs and these will include the bcb fabrication files the bcb assembly files 3d model documentations drawings etc and we will see all these in details as well so this is basically an overview about the workflow for schematic design as well as layout design in a systematic way using altium designer and again this workflow uh, uh, are based on best practices and self-experience there is no standard that specify uh, what is the best way to design schematic sheet and uh, layout in Altium Designer or any other tools and this workflow might be different for uh, different tools so now uh, our project today as we said we will be diving into PCB design in Altium Designer by designing a stable multi vibrator. Now, just a quick overview you will hear uh, the term monostable, bistable, and astable. There are three types of widely used vibrators. The monostable and bistable multi vibrators required an external trigger pulse for their operation to get to start. Now, stable multi vibrators are the most commonly used type of relaxation oscillator because not only uh, they are simple, reliable, and ease of construction, but they are also produce a constant square wave output waveform. Now, they are consisted of two cross couple transistors and timing capacitors, couple resistors, and it's, it's very simple to construct. So as we indicated in, in, in the beginning of this session, we are going to design the a stable multi vibrator using through hole components only. And then we will try to change all the through hole components into surface mount components and redesign the board as well. I, if you are not um, familiar with uh, the stable multi vibrator circuit, I have here a YouTube video just to explain for you. So you see how they are alternating right and left, Let, let's say. So they will turn on and off and, and off on and off and so on. This is the multi vibrator. So it's, it doesn't have a settled state. It's keep on and off and and off between two states. 
so before we get started make sure that to learn Altium Designer as you go through the design at any time whenever you are in the environment over a menu command a dialog a panel or a design object just press f1 to display comprehensive information about whatever was under the cursor so just put your cursor over this panel or dialog or whatever once you uh, press f1 the browser will open uh, detailed and comprehensive information about the functions you have your cursor over now the second helpful piece of information is while you are running a command let's say you are routing now press shift f1 and you will display a list of in command shortcuts and this will also be very helpful and we will see it as well now without further details let's go into altium designer one note before we switch to the circuit design as we see on this slide basically we need to have a uh, nine leds uh, nine green leds and nine red leds now the multi vibrator will alternate these on and off so the green leds will turn on then they will turn off then the red led will turn on turn off and so on so it's green red green red green red and they will alternate now the power supply is basically just a 5 volt uh, through power connector and we can use any wall adapter 5 volt wall adapter that similar to the ones uh, used for charging uh, cell phones and so on and the positioning on the board this is uh, for, for our circuit today we will have 9 green LED on one side and we have 9 red LED on the other side and we have power connector on the front side or back side it doesn't matter so this is kind of a placement planning no, you, you know where to put your uh, component and this is here you see the green LED and here you see the red LEDs these are the actual LEDs uh, you need to buy from the component provider and if you notice in here you will see one of the leads is longer than the other and this is a kind of coding for the polarity the long one is basically the positive and the short one is the negative and also the other indication for polarity if you look inside in here you will see two electrodes there is a small one and there is a large one the small one is basically the positive and the large one is the negative this is another indication of if the leads were cut it off so you can count on this to identify the positive from negative now let's switch to uh, the simulation and take a look at this so this is LT spice and this is a free simulation tool you can download from linear technology website and it's real spice it, it counts on real spice model so whatever you get out of it it's real so i always use real spice uh, softwares or real spice model one of them is uh, very well known is the pspice in orcad environment but pspice is not free it's paid it's expensive so two of the best tools you can use for simulation for real spice model simulation uh, are the LT Spice and there is another one from Texas an instrument called Tina so to show you Tina just uh, because it's also uh, important tools uh, if you go to yeah spice based analog simulation program you can go to Alt Texas an instrument or search for Tina TI in Google and you will get to the link where you can download the software it's, it's also free so the latest version is uh, October 4th 2018 and it's also very powerful so I use both and the good thing about it if you are using chips from Texas and Instruments most of the chips have a Tina Spice model you can run it right away and use it or you can use LT Spice as well now for the design basically this is a stable multi vibrator it uses two crossed coupled transistors in here and you have the timing circuit 
for the first one composed of C1 and R3 and the timing circuit for the second one composed of R4 and C2 and basically C1 and C2 they will charge and discharge to change the potential voltage on Q2 and Q, uh, Q1 and Q2 gates to open them, uh, alternate them on and off. Now the timing is basically calculated T1 is 0.69 R3 by C1 and T2 is 0.69 R4 by C2. If you have C1 equal to C2 and R4 equal to uh, R3, it's one equation basically. So you can use 0.69 multiplied by R, multiplied by R and multiplied by C, which is one of these two values. Now, your frequency is basically is one over T1 plus T2. So it's it's very simple. Now. If we take uh, some calculation for our circuit here, so the timing for each one for e the turn on time for each LED is 0.69 multiplied by R3. R3 is 1 meg, so 10 to the power 6 multiplied by C1, which is uh, 0.22 micro, is 10 to the power minus 6. So 10 to the power minus 6, uh, cancel 10 to, to the power minus 6, and you only need to multiply by 22. And this is 0.15 second. That's the whole time. So if you multiply by 1000, this is 151 millisecond on, 150 millisecond off each one of these. So, and here we have a driving transistor. These are power transistor. If you have a heavy load, so many LEDs, not only limited to nine, and just and for illustration. So this circuit is just for illustration. So if you have uh, so many LEDs, you can drive them by driving transistor in here and here. As you can see, these are power transistor can handle more current. I think the TIB31 is around 3 amp. But these are um, signal transistor. They cannot handle uh, so much current. And these diodes just to prevent the negative uh, uh, reverse voltage on the gates. And this is the power supply. Basically, we have 5 volt power supply. And let's run this. So if we take the signal in here, as you can see, it's basically these are on when this is closed, connecting the ground supply to the LED. So the on state is here, meaning this transistor is open, and this is the on state, on state, on state. And these are off when this transistor is closed, and the, power sub the, the voltage in here, potential voltage is in here, basically it's the 5 volt. So these are off at this state. Let's take a look at the other ones. Now you see how they are alternating. Let's take, change this color to red so it will be clear. So basically the red LEDs, they have the red graph, uh, red uh, waveform. The green LED, they have the green waveform. Now here the red LEDs will be on, the green LED will be off, and here the red LED are off, the green LEDs are off, and so on. So as we can see, they are turning on and off and and off. And this is basically is the turning off state, uh, turning on state for the transistor, uh, transferring from off into the active state. So it's basically just an example, very simple example. We are not uh, here to explain how we can use LT spice, but for every thing, a circuit I design, I always use a spice model to simulate if possible. So logic circuit, we know the output of logic circuit. I usually don't simulate logic circuit, but for analog circuits, uh, RF, RF design, I always use a SPICE model before I put any component in, in schematic sheet. So I try to optimize and tune my uh, circuit in, in SPICE before I do any implementation in schematic. So we are going basically to design this. Now we can have this on the second screen and we start we can start because we have the no, we know the component uh, component values. We can start the schematic. Let's go to Altium Designer. Here we go. We need to start um, our first project in Altium Designer. The first thing we need to do is to create a project. To create a project, basically you can go to File, New, and click on a project. This is one way. The other way you can come here into the design workspace, right click and add new project. So you have multiple ways to do it. Let's do it, new project. 
Now, when you click on a new project in here, Altium Designer will give you three different locations to store your new project. The first one is a local project, and which is um, the default option. The second one is not yet active, which is Altium 365. Altium 365 is coming to offer uh, like a unified BCB design a platform that exists in the cloud. Everything will be in the cloud. So but it's saying stay tuned. It's not yet released. The third one is version control. Basically, if you have a repository for your project, and you have, let's say, Altium Concord Bruce subscription or Altium Vault or Altium Nexus, you can save your project into the repository in the cloud. But for now, we are going to save our uh, project design into a local repository. Now here, you need to give a name for the project. A stable, let's call this a stable th using through whole parts. And here you need to specify the directory where the project will be saved. Let's skip the default directory. This is Altium directory. Now let's take a look at these parameters. You can add parameters. And these parameters are basically part of uh, the project uh, template. And we will see these. You can add them later or you can add them now. If you want to add them now, it's basically you click, let's say, in the name author of this project. Let's say lead lead for instance now you have parameters now when we go into the project options we look under the parameters tab we will see this parameter over there exist now all that you need to do is to select the default project type and click on create now you can see here uh, your project project PCB the first thing we need to add is a schematic sheet you go to the file new schematic or you can add it from here by right click on the project, add new to the project, and select schematic. Now, if you are building a large project with multiple schematic sheets, you can add them one after another. Right click again, add to the project schematic sheet. But our project is not that big, it's just simple circuit design. As we see in here, we have couple transistors and LEDs and it cannot be divided into subsystems so it's just one system one simple system so we don't need the second schematic sheet all that you need to do is to delete it to do that right click on it and select close once you click in close this will be transferred from the project and will be removed from the project or sometimes it can be transferred into um, a free document all that you need is to close the free document now the next step is to add your BCB. We can add the BCB layout to this project. And it's loading. OK, here we go. So we have the schematic and we have the BCB editor. Now, uh, you need to click on the document to have this document in focus mode. Now, before start drawing the circuit, it's good to set up the appropriate document options, including sheet size, snap, and visible grid. We are not going to go over all the different properties and features in every single panel, panel we are going to use. The objective of this uh, session is to have a quick overview on how to create circuit from A to Z as indicated earlier. So we are going to do it quickly and in a clean way. And we will come back later in the next session to discuss these features in details. But now let's let's move uh, fast and get that done as fast as possible. But it's good to set up some of the features, including uh, starting with the properties. Now, if the property panel is not in here, is not showing in here, uh, you, you can show that from here. You can go, go to the panels in here, panel command, and you will see the properties. You click on it and you will have it into the folder. Now, the content of this properties panel chain changes um, by the object is being selected. Now, if there is no object selected and you only have the free space in here, then you have the properties for your um, schematic editor or the schematic sheet. If you have a component and you are... Uh, Clicking on that component and the component is in focus, then the properties are for that component. So you need to be aware of that. This is 
uh, not general properties panel so it's based on the component is uh, being selected or the object or if nothing is selected so if you are in the free area um, these are the sections that you will see you have the selection filter and we'll talk about the this um, later on and this is very powerful and here you have the units you can select uh, mils or millimeter a uh, millimeter and this is a visible grid this is the grid you can see it's a visible grid you can hide this grid or you can show it and you can select the resolution for this visible grid 50 mil or 100 mil i recommend that to keep it on 100 mil also the snap to grid to keep it on 100 mil the reason for that by default all the components built in the libraries, they have a spacing between the bins set to 100 mil. Now, every any component you try to um, place from a library, when they design this component, the spacing between the bins are is by default 50, uh, 100 mil. So try to keep this uh, 100 mil and don't, don't change it. If you want to change the color, you can come in here and change this color. Now for the sheet, this is the default template. We will talk about how we can create a customized template later on, but not for now. But here, if you want to change the sheet size, for instance, if you want to switch to A4, for instance, you can change that from here. This is the A4 sheet is much larger, much larger. If you want portrait or landscape, also you can change that from here. And this is for um, the margin and zooms. Here you have four zooms and four numbers, so you, you can change that to six. Okay, that's all we need to do. Let's uh, save our project and change before we get started. So this is sheet one. Basically, you can give if you have multiple sheets, it's very important to give a descriptive name that represent the content on the sheets. Oh, so this is, let's give it the same name as the project, as table. And then also you need to save your BCB. You can, let's give it the same name, it doesn't matter. You can select the name that you want. Now, everything is saved right now. Let's go back to the schematic sheet and start placing the components. Now in Altium Designer, there are several um, resources to add components to the design. Now, you, first of all, you have the component panels. If you go to the panels and view the components, and this is basically local libraries or server-based libraries. Now, you can you have these are installed library in, in on my computer and these are Michelinus devices and connector are uh, the default library that come with Altium Designer by default we can dock this panel in here now the other panel or the other source it's from something called manufacturer part search panel and this is a new feature added in Altium Designer 19 and it's very powerful where you have an access to half million components with their um, almost uh, the schematic symbol and layout footprint as well and these are classified in here let's take this one undocked and so we can have access to it so and they are classified and so if you need for instance um, LEDs you can click on up to electronics and you will see all different kind of LEDs and you can search you can open the filter in here you can filter this let's say I need to see only the component with schematic and footprint models here you see the integrated circuit or for instance this LED you can see the schematic symbol and you can see the footprint in 3d and here you can see the footprint in 3d you can see some parametric information in here and these are very nice and here you can see if you want to download the data sheet or if you want to download the library or place the component or on, on your um, uh, schematic sheet design. Here you can see the availability, how many available, 26k, uh, 26, uh, 26,000 pieces are, are available by this distributor. And here is the price for each one of them. And now let's get this bigger and it's just a quick overview we'll come back to this so no worries about it but it, it might take more than one hour to explain how to use this 
so I'm gonna dedicate a session uh, for libraries only so here if you if you have this arrow if you click on it you will see all different suppliers component uh, suppliers digikey mauser network and uh, event element 14 etc now the ones in red meaning it's there is no stock they don't have this component on stock and the one in in uh, these are in red the one in green they have this component and you can see how much available right now then this is real time updated information with information about the price so you can select from which supplier you would get this component and in this case you have information about the supply chain for the component updated in real time especially when you generate the bill of material uh, that needed to order the parts and all these information will be updated in the bill of material in real time and you will get real um, uh, cost of your uh, circuit and this is very very helpful now this filter for instance here if you say filter by mount the car and also these are dynamic will change based on the categories being selected in here or the component being selected so the case package the forward current etc but one important filter we need to talk about uh, right now and which is very important for us is called model has a model meaning it has a schematic symbol and bcb layout so if i click on yes now you will only see components with a model how can i identify component with with a model or without model if you can see this symbol in here the green symbol that's mean this component is associated with a schematic symbol and uh, layout footprint as well now here you can see the filter if you want to go back you click on this x to remove the filter and now you should see all the component with or without model now this is an example look at this component it doesn't have the model symbol in here and if you come in here it will say a uh, symbol is not present footprint is not present because they are not available in, in in this design so of course you can transfer the parameter from here and create a symbol and also we'll see how we can we, we can do that but this is just a quick overview about the manufacturer part search that we are going to use today and one note in here uh, before we move forward if you don't see this details panel you can access this from here so when you start uh, the manufacturer part search for the first time it will look like this now all that you need to show the details panel is to click on this icon in here so if you click on it now you have access to the details panel and this is also very powerful now let's tuck this in here as well because we are going to use both of them now our design will start with the through hole parts only we will try to uh, design everything using through hole parts we might not find 3d model in the default libraries for through hole parts but we can uh, do some practice in here to um, download 3d models from uh, one of the 3d free 3d models uh, websites and try to import them into altium designer this is a good practice also for us now let's start putting the component if we go back to our circuit Let's start with the core components in this case. The core components are these um, transistor, cross couple transistor, 2N3904. So we go to back to the manufacturer part search. We can bring it here. So 2N3904. Of course, we need a component with model. So basically, we select yes, I need a model in here. Just show me the component with the model. And here you can see components, different packaging, and different stuff. Now, when you see red in here, that's mean um, this is end of life. We'll talk about this uh, color uh, coding. Uh, green meaning in, in production. Don't select the component with red because this is end of life and is no longer uh, being fabricated by the manufacturing company. Now let's select this one for instance. Here you get the parametric information about it. And here you can see the schematic symbol and the footprint in uh, 2D. And here is the 3D model for the footprint. Data sheet, etc. And this is here alternative. This is very powerful as well. 
where you can select an alternative component in case this component is not available. This number on the right is an indicator um, matching indicator. So this component is like 100% matching for this component. The other way to do a comparison between components in this panel, if you select the first component, for instance, and select this one, hold control down and select the other component now you will see a comparison between the two in here so part one and part two anything in red these are different uh, parameters anything in white these are matching parameters and here you can see the footprint the bins and here you see also uh, sorry the symbols with the bins and the footprint on, on the layout as well. So this is a quick comparison instead of going to the data sheet for every single component and try to explore these parameters. They are already pulled out for, uh, from the data sheet and they made available for you to do the comparison very quickly and in a clean way. So we need to use this component now. All that I need to do either I can go in here, I click on place or you can right click on it and click on place. Now, this will be loaded, and you remember when we set that transparency for the panels in session number three? It depends how far the cursor is from the panel or the edge of the panel. Now, we have set, uh, set that in the properties. Now, let's place this transistor in here, and we need another transistor now. To rotate, you can use the space bar on your keyboard. The space bar is for rotate. If you hold control down and use the wheels on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. Now, we, we need to flip this component. Now, use X on your keyboard to flip right and left. And you can use Y key to flip up and down. For now, we need just to flip it on the X axis. That's it like this and we can place it now now to release either you can right click on your mouse or click on escape and the component will be released now you can search for the second component let's take a look at our simulation what do we need we need this diode uh, 1N4148 let's see if we find it 1N4148 and with the model so we have it in here and this is a diode and this is the 3d model for the diode right click place we need two of them so we place the first one the second one and we can connect them later so you don't have to do that right now escape to release it now what else uh, let's go back so we need these capacitors 0.22 microfarad and our circuit is running at 5 volt account for tolerances and let's take look so for searching for a cap you can select you can write cap capacitors the whole word or you can write cap for capacitor res res for resistor and so on and for inductor or diode you can write ind so these are shortcuts so cap 0.22 microfarad and we need it so through whole part. Um, let's remove. Oh, okay. So, cap 0.22 microfarad. Okay, I did something wrong. And radio. And we need it with model yes. Let's see. So, this looks like end of life. We cannot use it and this is a huge we need regular cap not this one and the through hole it looks like they don't have any uh, radial caps or through hole caps with a model yet in the, the manufacturer part search let's remove the model from the filtering and yeah that's it this is the only cap with the model and 
0.22 we cannot use this one it's not the right one what we can do actually we can go to the integrated libraries installed in the system local libraries and here we can search we selected this we can see what caps do they have so here it's easier of course for surface mount component and so this one we can change this one cap polarized these are surface mount and this is the only one okay so we can select this one now you can right click on it and click on place and make sure that you are selecting the machine devices in here or you can click a place in here so we need one two caps and that's all we need let's go back to the simulation Oops. here what else we need we need resistors um, so if we select one resistor uh, we can copy and paste this resistor and we need a diode LEDs and we need TIB31C so let's see if we can find TIB31C in this panel in here so TIB31C okay we have it which is good and we can select a part that is in production not out of life or end of life so you can right click on place or you can come in here and click on place same thing so we need two transistors and we can put them in here and now we need an LEDs now when you what you can do you just place your component and then copy and paste and start connecting we need red LED and we need that we can filter that later let's click on this let me show you how we can filter that so we need this one to be through whole LEDs so remove this filter from here and now you can see this packaging and mounting so if you select through hole in here you are filtering out all the LEDs with through hole and if you select model as well so you can filter out all the through hole LEDs with a model so let's select three millimeter LEDs and this is three millimeter and it has a schematic and a model and it looks uh, looks good so this is red LED let's place it in here we can add one and we can copy and paste later on same thing we need green LED let's have it from the same company all those three millimeter it was from worth electronic and this is three millimeter let's place it and the last thing we need to add is the resistor and connector jack let's add a power jack it's easy to find one of these uh, power adapter jacks this 2 by 5.5 millimeter or and this yes looks good place we can add it in here and resistors and i don't think uh, the manufacturer part search have uh, axial or through a whole resistors uh, at this point so what we can do we can go to the component panel and go to the machinist devices and search here for resistor if you don't have this filter turned in you can search for res and here are all the resistors and you can use this one as you can see there is no 3d model with this it's only 2d model and as i said earlier we can uh, pull a 3d model from uh, external library and try to port it into altium designer and use it with this component so for now right click on it click on place resistor and put it in here now we can close this panel we have all the components to create our circuit and let's put everything together before we do that and let's as we can see in here so we can remove this this res1 uh, comment on it to do that you need to select this part click on properties and now uh, you can see the properties specified for this part if you click on the free space these are the properties for the schematic document so we need the properties for this one you can hide this comment in here so uh, you can move the value close to the component now this value we have multiple different values i believe so we have 1.2k we have 10k 
and what else we have we have one mix so let's change this value to question mark you can go to the parameters and under the value let's put question mark so we don't forget to change or assign the right value for every resistor because we are going to copy and paste this resistor now let's start um, connecting the circuit together so to do that um, let's move them away you can move the component and connect the bin to the bin in here release it then put it back and they will connect automatically this is method number one just move the con uh, component close to the component other component bin to bin and then move it back and if you look at the bin there are like a plus uh, signal in here or or cross and this is main indication of a connection point on the bin so this is method number one method number two is to go to the tool in here and select the place wire or you can do a shortcut control W now when you come closer to the bin you see how the cursor is changing to red indicating that now you are at starting point of a connection bin yeah now click on the left mouse bin release it and then move the mouse closer to the other bin now look how they are snapping together the wire and the bin I'm not getting closer I'm just at 100 mil distance because this is the grid uh, we have 100 mil resolution in here so at this point if I right left the click on the mouse it will connect automatically in here so how we can change this how we can change the snap distance and uh, basically let's delete this one select and delete if you go to the properties and let's duck this one in here so the visible grid is this grid you see in here so if we change this to 50 50 visible grid and it will become oh it's 500 um, so, oh, okay so it's it's a smaller but your snap grid is still a hundred and your resolution also snap distance is a hundred it doesn't matter so if you move or you try to move a component so you are moving two steps or two blocks because your a snap grid is 100 mil even if your visible grid is 50 you only can move as specified in the snap grid now if you change this to 50 now what you can do look you can move according to your visible grid it's one block at a time now one thing i want to indicate in here um your snap distance cannot be larger than your snap grid it should be a division by two or divide by two of your snap grid or the minimum they should be the same value so if your snap grid 50 you can have your snap distance to be 50 and now if we start connecting once you get close to it you see how it it connect or snap into the bin connect right away even if i'm not my cursor is not yet close to it it's at 50 mil now if i click in here they will connect because it's a snap into it and this is a nice feature in Altium Designer now let's see what will happen when let's collect the select the wire and now you will see now let's set the snap grid to distance to 25 mil it's a smaller and let's see what will happen now if we click on grid it's not snapping because now your grid resolution is 50 the minimum you can move by your cursor is 50 mil but your snap distance is 25 mil so you need to be at the distance of 25 mil to get it to snap and this is not possible and that's why we are saying the snap distance cannot be smaller than the snap grid it should be a multiple of the snap grids or at least equal to the snap grid now if we put this for instance to 100 mil let's see what will happen now and start wiring now this is a hundred mil you see I'm I'm halfway to the bin and it's a snapping to it because it's a hundred mil if I click at this point it will connect automatically now one can say can I put it as a 500 mil yes but be careful if you have multiple bins for integrated circuit for instance and all together it might be confusing a little bit uh, so what I recommend is to have this set into a hundred mil all the time hopefully this will explain it clearly i don't want to get confused with it so let's start connecting these parts together 
by following the design uh, okay so let's uh, put this now this should go in here so to rotate just select the component space and the space will rotate the component and you can move these comments just select them and drag them down okay so we have um, resistors space and select let's move this resistor now what you can do you can do copy and paste select the component ctrl c ctrl v and you can place the component in the new place now let's let's do something nice um, let's let's remove this section because we can do a quick design now we need to have a cab in here so what we can do we can bring this cab in here and also we have a cab we don't need this really so what we can do we can remove this comment we don't need it and we are we don't yet know the value or it's 0.2 so we can put it right away in here so it's boring 22 microfarad and we can move this in here so now let's connect this connect this and also yep so these are connected and this goes into this so what we can do we have the other transistor in here right so in order to rotate to the other side we need to use x so x will flip the component on the x-axis y will flip it on the y-axis so we have this in here we can move the comments in here or designator as well we can connect this to this and this goes to to the ground now the ground is basically we need we need to connect to the power source in here so we need to use the ports now you go to the ports in here place ground and here you connect your ground and then oops place 5 volt uh, 5 volt power ports now these power bolt uh, ports um, ground or 5 volt or anything else they are a reference point meaning if you copy this and place it into here connect with this and connect with that now this means all these bins are connected to this net this is similar to uh, doing this so if you have if you are connecting like that so it's exactly the same things now the, the name of this net if you look at the this net the name of it is now it's plus 5 volt now instead of doing all these connections and have crossed wired one thing you can do you can use this reference port and connect all of them together now all these are reference to this and they have the same net name same thing for the ground when you had we need to have ground in here so it's connected to the ground and these are connected to the 5 volt and here we will have the leds so let's add the leds now so we need on this side we need the green leds now same case we have this as red led if we recall that so instead of the comment in here maybe we can put um, this is red and this one was green as we can see in here it's a green bright green so we can put comment as green to identify the green and red so let's have the green LEDs and also so it's down and one thing we can do is to have this in here and we can move this in here designator to here and now we can connect this with that and we need current limiting resistor now you should know how to calculate the current limiting resistor is very simple basically it's easy if you have your power supply is 5 volt minus your working voltage for the led it's 2 volt and divide by the current you need to saturate this led is 2.5 milliamp so it's 1.2 kilo ohm because you, it's 2.5 milliamps. This is how you calculate the limiting uh, current limiting resistor for the LED to turn on the LED. It's very easy, straightforward. So now all that you need is to copy this in here. So let's keep some space. Now 
if we are gonna need nine LEDs, so these are three, six. Oh, we don't have space, and we need to expand. One thing we can do right away is to change the the template into a three, and now we have a bigger schematic sheet. So let's move these away, and we can delete these. We need the red LED. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need two more, but we need to move this first. Uh, here and here we have two more let's move this power connector up there and now we need to connect all these together And make sure you can see this connection junction. That's mean whenever you have more than two wires connecting together, the connection junction is an indicator that these are connected. Now, if you have something like that, let's say, now they are crossed in here, but they are not connected together. There is no electrical connection between this wire and this wire because there is no junction uh, co connection like this one. So you need to move it back and now they are connected as one line now we have one two three four five six seven eight nine leds it looks good and this is basically if we look at the circuit this is basically the left uh, uh, hand sided uh, part of the circuit so why did i do that because what i can do now Control c and i can copy all that one time and i will save time now Control V, give it some time and it will show up. Now I need to flip it on the X direction. I click on the X key. It's flipped. And now I can place it in here. Now I need to move everything to the left a little bit. And here we go. So this goes in here and this goes in here. Now let's take a look at the wire. Select the wire. Now... The wire mode right now, if you look at the status bar in here, it says shift plus space to change the mode, and the current mode is 90 degree. So if I select the wire, you can see it's 90 degree up and down. Now, if I click on space, you are changing the direction, but you are still using 90 degree. So if you move up and down in here, or if you click space, now you are changing the orientation of the wire. Now if you click shift plus space, now you switch to 45 degrees start. Here you can you can read it in here. You can read the status. Now this is 45. Another shift to space. Now this is a free wiring. It's any that can go any direction. Another click space. Now you have auto wire. Another one, you go back to the 90 degree space, uh, 90 degree. So if let's go to the 45 degree, which is the mode I need. Now space without shift is changing the orientation for the 94 degree. So we need this to go in here, and we need this to go in here. Now, now these are still green, and these are. Uh, green now this has to be red what I can do I can select all these LEDs and I can delete them then I can rotate this LED now control C control V is just very quick I can replace all these in place it's very user friendly, very handy, and easy to use environment. So let's move this to the center of the. Now, this is our circuit. This is our design. One thing we need to add for best practices is to add a coupling cab across the power supply in here. And this has to be at the connector point. And again, these boards are a reference, meaning this net and this net are connected together and anything reference to this are also connected to the, together and i will show you that and when we switch to the layout 
So if we go back to our design, this is the design we want to achieve. And this is our circuit. Now we are done with the schematic actually. If you want to add some comments in here, you can do that. Basically, you have a text string in here. You can add anything you want. Yeah, feel free. We'll talk about that later on in more details. Uh, but now we need to achieve something very quick. So the schematic is ready. But we still need to annotate all the designator and change the value for these resistors. Now, one thing we do, we know these resistors are all 1.2 kilo ohm. I can select all these resistors together and also these resistors. Just hold shift down and use your mouse to select all the components. Go to the properties and go to the value and we know that this is 1.2 kilo ohm and we talked about how we can make a naming convention according to the ibc standard it should be 1k2 this is the naming convention um, recommended by the ipc standard so meaning 1.2 kilo ohm now all the values has changed one have changed one time now we have changed these and we still have these resistors these are one mega ohm resistors uh, yes these are one meg these are one meg and these resistors are 10k yes 10 kilo ohm these are 10 kilo ohm and that's it we need to do the annotation now what what um Annotation means now you have R question mark, R question mark. You need to identify these by a sequential number R1, R2, R3. Same case in here, LED1, LED2, LED3. So when you do assembly on the board, every single component is identified by a unique ID or unique designator. That is the annotation. The software will, will automatically scan all the component and change the question mark into a number that is unique for every single component and this number will not be repeated other than that the ERC or electrical rule check will show an error so to do the annotation you go to the tools annotation annotate schematic now here update you click on update change list and it says you have 50 components needs to be annotated in here so here are the components. You will see them on the left side with the question marks. And here is the proposed naming for these components based on the order of processing specified in here. So here you can see the order of processing is basically you can select either if it's up then across, meaning the compiler will start from this point, go up, see change the name for this and then move this way all the way down up down up down up down and change all these values so basically in this case this will be r1 r2 3 4 5 6 and so forth now down then across it's similar things but since we have only one line of components in here they will come to the same but if you have like resistor in here, resistor in here, resistor in here, and they are spreading all over the sheet. Now the order of numbering or assigning a number for this component is according to this green arrow. Now across, then up, same case. So it will scan one line from all the uh, from the left all the way to the right, and then go back to the first line from all the way from the left all the way to the right, and so on. It's just the direction how the compiler will look onto these component and assign. Uh, the naming order for them so it doesn't matter which one we are selecting in here <laughs> so up and this way so we update and accept changes and create ECO so when we click on this you will see the ACO engine ECO is basically the engineering change order so C will become C1 and this C will become C2 and basically this one and this one are identified for the compiler by the position on the schematic sheet and the change order. So this is the naming how they will change. LEDs, so basically you have two, uh, three caps 
you have two diodes, you have one connector or jack, you have 18 LEDs, 9 for red, 9 for green, you have four transistors and you have 22 resistors. Now what you need to do, you can validate the changes, you need to see green on the check all the way down and execute the changes and also if you if all of them are done green that's mean everything is correct now you can click on this to show the errors only so what kind of errors i can expect in here for instance if you have two components with same designator by mistake you change them manually or if one of the component is missing the footprint you will see an error in here and you will see a descriptive error about it in here though so you can go back and correct before uh, execute the engineering uh, change order again now it's done if you look now at the components r1 2 3 4 5 all the way coming to r22 led 1 all the way to led 18 and this diode 1 diode 2 and here we have q1 q2 q3 q4 why is that because the order of change uh, do you remember from the left to the right, then go to the second line and so on. That's why. So if you change that, the order of numbering will change as well. By this, this will be complete. But here you have a sheet, nothing in here, out of nothing as well. So since we have only one schematic sheet, uh, the number will be one as well. To change the number on schematic sheet, you go to tool, annotation number schematic sheets and this is useful actually when you have multiple sheets even if you have one sheet you need to know that you have one out of one so what you can do you can do auto sheet number so you have one document number and update the total count when you click now on ok it's not reflecting in here but because this template doesn't support that but we'll see that later with document supporting numbering as well now, before we compile the project in here, we need to set the error reporting. And to do that, you go to the project, project options, and here you have the error reporting. The error reporting dialog shows the violation type in addition to the report mode and under the report mode you can see the severity of the error you can specify the level of severity of this violation for instance this violation in here type of violation are categorized into violation associated with buses but you don't we don't have buses in here we'll later when we do more complex examples we'll have data buses here, something associated with components. Let's pick, for instance, if you have a duplicate part designator, this is an error. Now, when we compile the project, and we can make this error on purpose, and we will see how we can see that. So this will come as an error. Now, we can increase the severity of that into a fatal error. Now, this is cannot be tolerated. This has to be fixed. Or you can say, it's okay, do not report not report this one so even if you have a double designator you will get no error about that or you can set it to warning it's okay we can move forward with that so anything with error or fatal error has to be fixed before you go into or you transfer your design into the pcb layout anything with warning can be tolerated if you have something you don't want to report you can select that no report as well so we are not gonna go over all these different uh, error reporting the default setting for this is more than enough for our current design we might need to change or do some changes to this when we have a more complex design but for now i just want to show you briefly about the error reporting or and this has to do with the settings for the erc electric electrical rule check always in schematic you have erc electrical rule check and in the layout you have drc design rule check here in the schematic you uh, define and specify your error electrical error uh, check and in the layout you specify the design rules so we will see that in detail connection matrix on the other hand when the design is compiled, a list of the bins in each net is built into the memory. 
Now the type of each single bin will be detected by the compiler and if it's input or output or passive or input output whatever now then each single net is checked to see if there are bin types that should not be connected to each other for instance if you have an input bin and another input bin connected to one net what should uh, we treat this case for instance here we can see if you have an input bin connect unconnected so this is basically a warning now if you click on it now it will become an error and this is the legends so error is orange red is a fatal error a yellow warning and green no report so let's double click cycle it through uh, you will see all these different colors on it so input bin unconnected, it should be a warning. You need to show a warning for that. Now let's take another case. If you have an output pin uh, connected with bidirectional port. Now this is an error. Port should be connected with port and so on. So also leave this matrix for now as it is on the default settings. And we need to change it later, but not for now. Now it's good for a simple project we are going to work. Now the second thing you need to do is to configure the classes. Basically, Altium Designer will generate a class for every single schematic sheet you have and put all the components in one sheet inside one class. Now for this simple project, we have one schematic sheet and simple project, we don't want to generate any classes. So just uncheck this. We'll come back later into it and explain it in more details. But um, to make it clear, we need to have multiple schematic sheets to show the advantage of using classes. That's all you need to do now for uh, the options in this project. Now we can save that, everything together. Now we need to combine. How we can combine the project? You just simply go to the project and click on Compile BCB Project. And basically combining a project checks for drafting and electrical rules error in the design document and provide detailed information about these errors and the warning according to the de details we had in the error reporting and connection matrix. So let's do the compilation. So project, compile, and it's done. The other way to do it is right click on the project and also click on compile. Now since the message did not pop up, that means there is no problem. So compile successfully. No, error, no errors found. Now let's let's try to make an error. For instance, this is R13 and this is R14. Let's give this the same name. So you see the error is detected in real time. Now if I combine that, so the error will come up in here automatically. Duplicate designator. So R14 and R14. So this is wrong. We need to connect that. So we can connect that in here. So let's have, for instance, floating net like that. It's not connected. It's a close, but I did not see that it's not connected and stuff like that. So project compiled messages, you see floating power object. So floating power object are identified as a warning. And this is, in my opinion, this is a severe error and should be identified as an error or fatal error because this is a big, big problem. So before you switch to the layout, you need to make sure that your project is compiled and successfully and there are no errors at all. Now this design is ready to switch into the layout. Um, before we do that, let me show you something might be helpful. Let's change this designator back to 17 and we ha now we have double designator. Let's compile. And now when we click, we can see this error. If you double click on it, it will take you right away to the component where the error is. So it will help you to fix it. And it's zooming in. How you can control the navigation and zoom in and stuff like that or the zooming precision. You can control that in the system navigation option. If you go to the preferences and go to navigation. Where is navigation? Here is a navigation in the navigation highlight method so selection basically you are asking when you click on the message in here this will select the component and will zoom how far you want to zoom you can select in here let's say this is 
zoom and dimming everything else will be dimmed as you can see in here only this one will be visible 100 percent so let's change the distance like that now let's move away and everyone is not dimmed now let's double click on this now it's not as close as it was before now let's remove the dimming and let's message so the component is selected and the other things are not dim so let's dim this and let's move closer a little bit and now messages as you can see this is how you can control control that now let's connect uh, correct this back let's combine the project again and make sure that we don't have any error now let's go to the layout since we have already created the board and this is the default board size and this is the origin you see how the origin is off the board the first thing we need to do is let's move this origin to the bottom left corner and this is um, well known in industry you have this your coordination zero zero or your origin so to do that you go to edit origin set now you see the cursor changed you move close to this corner and click now this is the origin if we look at here at this corner in here and put the cursor at this point you will see it's zero zero and now if you move up this is the x coordination uh, y coordination and this is the x coordination and here you can see the x y coordination now the units used in here now as you can see it's imperial if you want to use metric you have two ways to do that one way is to click on the q key on the keyboard and this will change between metric and imperial so just q the other one is to click on the free space in here again you go to the properties in here scroll down and here you can see the unit either millimeter or mils as you can see in here you can change that but the shortcut for it is the QS and it's indicated in here in the corner in here you can see it now for now we are not going to change a lot of the uh, default configuration in here so let's keep everything as it is we are going we need we still need to change uh, the grid and also change the size of the PCB after we board the component of course for the number of layers this is a very simple design uh, two layers is more than enough if we look at the uh, view configuration we can see we have top and bottom this is by default when you create a bcb in altium designer two layers will be created by default and this is the minimum number of layers so two layers is more than enough we know we don't need to create or design a layer stack for this project it's very simple and very basic project so let's keep two layers for now and now we need to port all the components into here to do that you can either go into the design and import changes from the schematic or you can go to the schematic and click on design and click on update pcb document and here you will get the engineering change order the eco again now validate changes you will see all of them are correct on the top you will see the components that will be transferred and next you will see the nets connecting these components also will be or the net list will be transferred now you execute the changes and you make sure that everything is in green now once they are transferred you will be switched automatically to the bcb and you will see all the components placed on the side now you can check if there are any errors and also you can generate a report to see what was imported and what are the differences comparing to the old uh, import now we close this engine now we can see all the components in here they are put in random way and we need now to move them into here now one thing you can do you can either start go into the schematic sheet and okay where can I start what is the core component I need to place which component should be placed first maybe this connector because it's user accessible connector or user accessible parts and maybe I can start with this connector and move it all the way to the board 
somewhere in here, for instance, and then move the boards. But, but before we do that, what about the design rules? Should we define the design rules before moving the components? Yes, we need to do that. So let's go back a step and we need to go to the design rules. And these are the design rules that we need to define. They are a lot. And we are going to try to go over all of them if time permits. But for now, we need to focus on a couple of these for this project. The first one is the clearance. And basically for the clearance, what is the clearance between track to crack, track, between traces? Now this is a 10 mil. This is the standard or the default values in Altium Designer. Basically, if you go with the smaller clearances, the technology to fabricate the board will be more complex and fabricating the board will be more even more expensive. For instance, let me show you just a quick example to make it clear. Let's go to PCB way. It's for quick prototyping, easy and small quantities. You can go from here. Let's select PCB instant code. Now, let's say our board is 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter in size and we need 10 pieces. And it's two layers, FR4 material, as these things we talked about in, in the first two sessions. And then the thickness of the board is 1.6 millimeter, which is a standard thickness. Now, the minimum track spacing, look in here, it's 6 mil. Now, for this, let's calculate, uh, let's calculate all that. So, for now, without shipping, 10 boards will cost you $5. Now, I think this is based on promotion. Now, if you say the spacing... Let's change the spacing, minimum track spacing to 3 mil. Now look at the cost. It's 114 and they need 7 to 8 days to fabricate these PCBs because it's way more complex technology they have to use for that. Now let's go back to 6 mil. It's $5 and they can do that in 24 hours. If you switch to 4 mil, for instance, it's 55 if you switch to 3 mil, it's $114 for 10 piece, and they need like the whole week to finish this build. Now, the same thing when it comes to minimum hole size. If you have a small hole, this is expensive. If we go back to something like 0.3 millimeter hole, this is $5. So the smaller you go, is the more complex the technology will become. So you need to um, understand what what um, design rules you need to specify in here. Now, sometimes if you have really dense or high density design, you need to go with very small traces and you need to reduce also the clearances. But for now, this is very sim uh, something very, very simple. So we don't need that um, small clearances for here. Now, for this project i need you to specify the clearances to be 16 mil for everything and to do it to make like you can come and change one by one in here 16 and move to the next or you have a gener general settings in here if you specify 16 in here it will change all of them so let's do clearance as 16 the next thing we need to change in here is the width so clearance in here, if you go back, so trace to trace, SMD bad to trace, through hole bad to trace, and then uh, you go the same way. Trace to, uh, where is it? So through hole bad into SMD bad or through hole bad. So bad to bad, how they should be away from each other and so on. So it's, it's, it's you have X and Y and uh, they cross together. So the weights, what is the preferred widths of the traces on the top layer now since you have only two layers you will see only the specs for two layers in here if you have 10 layers you will see all of them and you need to specify the preferred minimum and maximum width for the traces now let's do also 16 mil traces as a preferred so the minimum you can go uh, go let's specify it to 14 and the maximum Let's specify this to 20. 
I'm not gonna create a customized rule for now, but let's leave it as it is for now, like that. So, so oh sorry, this is 16, and we are not gonna use a VS, so we don't want to specify the VS, and let's leave everything as as it is right now. It's the default. We are not using VS, so we don't want to change the VS as well. Let's click on OK, and now we can start moving the component and positioning them. So one way to do it is you can move these components one by one and start doing like that and based on the schematic order so you know the red LEDs need to be on the top and the green LEDs need to be on the bottom and you start moving that one by one. Now the other way to do that and this is um, one of the best ways to do it is to split if you have multiple screen, you can have your schematic screen on one monitor, uh, schematic sheet on one monitor, and you have layout screen on the other monitor. If you have only one monitor, try to split the monitor vertically. Now you have the schematic on this side, and you have your layout on this side. Now you need to change one of the most important settings before you start uh, positioning the component. You go to the preferences and search for a snap. So go to the layout general here. Activate online design rule check, meaning if something violate the rules, you will see it in real time online. So if you get two components close to each other, and they violate the spacing or clearance, you will see the, 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 the error right away in real time, so you can fix it while you are moving the component. And also activate object snap options, where you snap to the center, and this is kind of a smart snap. So when you com when component is being selected, it will smart snap to the center of the component and make moving the component very easy. The second thing you need to activate is search for cross, And uh, navigation, go system, navigation, cross select mode. Activate cross select, and this is very handy feature and very important feature. When you select the component in the schematic, it will be automatically selected in the layout and it will be highlighted as well. So let's see an example. If this is not selected on, or not checked on, in your system or your default settings, make sure this one is selected. Now let's select, for instance, this connector. So automatically, it will go to this connector and highlight that connector, this diode, for instance. Now if let's select multiple components. All of them will be selected. So let's select these. They will be selected. Now, what is the best way to position these components? Is it like select this connector in here, go to here, now drag it and take it all the way? This is one way to do it. What is the faster way to do it. So the faster way is to come, select this. This is the critical component I need to place first in order. So hold the control key down and keep it down. Select the second component in order. Oh, sorry, it's the shift key down. Select the shift key down. So what is next? Next, I need these LEDs. These are accessible for the user, right? So I need the green LEDs. I have the shift key down. Then I have their resistors as well. So for every LED I need current limiting resistor next to that LED. Then maybe the other LEDs on the other side of the board, I can select them in the same order. and the resistors as well. And now this is the selection order is basically how they will be selected on the layout as well in the same order. Now let's select these power transistors and then we have the oscillator with the diodes and the selection is in reasonable 
order. And then we have this and that. And I think we have everything selected. You don't have to select everything one time, but it's simple circuit. I can select everything. Now, next, you need to go and activate your BCB document in here. Now, go to the um, tools. Then you go to component placement and select reposition selected components and look what will happen now the first component is snapped into your cursor to place in the first one you selected on the schematic in this side now what you need to do you can come here and space to retain the component place it next in order is the next one you selected is the cap so space to find the best placement for this and place it next the led first led led one now we need those leds to be somewhere on this side led2 so it's better to have it like that we can rotate the other one led3 so keep reasonable spacing now if we come closer you see that what what's going on this is the erc or drc design rule check it's showing oh the package of this the first led is getting closer to the second one so let's place it in here now let's do it fast right now we have all the components we have nine leds and now they're resistors these are the through hole resistors for these leds we can have this one in here we can move the designators later and make sure keep clearance between the components on board because as you come closer you see how it turns into greens this is mean there is an error there is a collision so you need to Keep the specified clearance between the components, between the traces, and everything. And here, here. Next, we have the other set of LEDs. So let's. Okay, what we can do, we can put them. We can change the spacing between these LEDs later on. So let's put them very quick. There is a way. And then we have resistors. Don't worry about the designator. They are overlapping right now. That's fine. Let's place these components on board. And now we have the transistor, the first one that driving can have it in here and the second one and we have two transistors let's have these components in here for now and then we can reposition them just keep them close to the traces you can see how how each component is connected with the surrounding component so i'm trying to find a logical placement for these components based on the traces so these are the wire traces we can see and this is nice in altium designer where you can see the traces and how they connect with the component when you move them this will help you to find the best placement for these components now we have all the components placed nothing else and look we have a big board so we can resize the board later on but now everything is placed and let's go to the configuration and remove the mechanical layers these are mechanical layers we don't care about right now and let's find 
this goes with which which goes with which now this goes with this LED and this goes with these LEDs as we can see in here so what we can do we can rotate this to similar to the rest and now let's align these LEDs you select all of them go to the edit align and let's align them to the top and now all of them are on one line and let's let's now space them equally align now you select distribute horizontally in here so now they are spaced in the right way let's do the same thing for the resistors and edit select align you can align the top and align and they are spaced equally now same thing we do on the other side now so let's put this cursor aligned with this we have this in here and we have this aligned with this guy so it's easy now to have them now let's select the LEDs don't worry about the error edit align now let's um, distribute horizontally and then align top let's do the same thing for the resistors edit align top edit align distribute them horizontally now let's move them a little bit close okay looks neat now this transistor is in here it's providing the power to this circuit you can have it like that so this wire goes in here and this goes into the oscillator and this is the ground so you see there is no crossing between the connection i need to find the best way these traces can be routed and always look for the shortest path to route your traces now also this one you can see this goes here and this goes from here and this goes in here so also it's clear there is no problem with that we can move this caps coupling cap maybe into this position in here and we will move these designator later don't worry about them we need to this is part of uh, the process uh, as indicated in the flow chart in session three so now everything is here and it's clear now what left are these uh, component in the center which are for the oscillator so let's try to find the best placement for this we can close now this schematic or we can leave it let's leave it for now but we can resize it like that so it should finish in five minutes everything now let's this d2 now this guy is connected here let's understand the logical connection between these components and that this component connect with that and we can move this guy in here so this goes in here this goes in here and here we have a cap and we can put it like that so same thing actually we can do we can put this like that and this guy it's not connected with that so uh, this will go into this this has to connect with that and this has to connect with that so this goes in here and this that here and this 
is 5 volt, 5 volt, this can be anywhere. So you can see the net name on the bed of the components. You see 5 volt, 5 volt. And why? Because if you select, the, even if you select here the 5 volt, it's everything in 5 volts highlighted. If you select the ground, everything in ground will be highlighted. If you select any net, this net will be highlighted. So I'm trying to find the simplest way. Um, simplest path. These are clear. These are clear. These are clear. And easy to route. Now this guy will go from here. So the best if we can move this like that. And now we have clear from here and move this down here. Now it's simpler and easier to route as well. And like that. So if we want to... Yep. Right. Let's select this guy and this guy together. Okay. This is basically simple. Now, do we want to make the board smaller? We can do that. It's easy to be done. As we can see, we have plenty of space. We can select these components. And let's keep this aligned with the other LED. And we can move it down here. And yeah, we can move it, I think, even more. And this is fine, I think. Um, this we can move this in here. This transistor. Now we need to resize the board. Now what we can do, we can select all these components and move them all the way down here. We need to keep a distance from the edge of the board, of course, and this connector usually extend to the output. And now we can resize the board. To resize the board, we need to switch to a single layer mode. And to do that, you go to the view menu and board planning mode, or you can click number one on the keyboard. If you click on board planning mode, this is what you will see. And we go to the design, and select edit board shape now you can drag down to resize the board from here you can drag it down to resize it and now it's done you can go back to the two layer mode and if you want to see a 3d model of it you can click on the 3d model and now you can see this is the connector and these are the board transistors and these are the oscillation circuit. We have the red LEDs and green LEDs. And this is the back side of the board. Now we are missing some 3D models for these caps and resistors. And we can import them. We can do that. Uh, we will see that. We can do that. But now we need to finish the routing on the board. So to do the routing, let's close. Um, the schematic for now or keep it open we can keep it open it's, it's okay but we need to merge them back so we have one sheet view now it's ready to route now to route basically you need to select interactive routing and now if you hit on tab on the keyboard if you hit on tab you will see uh, the properties panel but if you select if you have an active routing so it's red red as you can see let's click on tab LED is red is the top layer and you can see it in here these layers are color coded so top is uh, red bottom is blue and you can change that of course if uh, you want this trace to be on the bottom layer basically you can click on bottom and now it's or click on the L on your keyboard and you will switch to the other layer in here. L, top, click. So it's letter L on the keyboard will change the layer. So let's route on the top layer. And if you click tab again, and let's say big, 
from existing and let's have this to 16 mil oops this is the maximum 16 mil and now you can move this now these are all 5 volt now you can click from here get closer you see how the cursor is changing right click on it now this point is connected now you click again and move to the other one is connected now since all of these are one net what you can do you can click on the first one move all over them or over all of them and go to the last one and click and now all of them are connected see all of them are connected it's very easy same thing in here these are five volt all of them now are connected these are all of them are cassettes going to the transistor you click they are connected they are connected um how we can make the board it's more clear for routing what you can do you can go to the view configuration and remove the silk screen layer basically this um, overlay is the silk screen layer where the components packages and designator are printed and now it's more clean and easy to route this is what i do all the time let's go back to the wire in here and it's basically the same shortcut Control w and schematic and layout now this one left click left click it will connect move close until you see the cursor changing click so left click left click and you will connect everything very quickly so it should not take more than five minutes to get this port routed and done so and what helps really is the placement of the component we place the component in a way that we don't have any traces crossing over each other make it hard to route where you need to use a vs because the reason or the objective of using vs if you have very complex um and highly dense PCB layout. In this case, you need to use a VIA to switch between layers to get these uh, traces routed in proper way. So we don't have that. It's very simple design. And so how you can change the orientation, same thing as in schematic space, we'll change it, shift the space, we'll change the mode. So this, is the, this mode is called radius. This code, and we'll talk about these modes later on. Now, let's route in 45 degree because this is the best practice. Don't ever route in 90 degree because this will create a problem, and we will talk about that later in signal integrity and EMI. So, this goes in here, and this goes in here. So, why we are seeing an error in here? This says the spacing between bad to bad is less than 16 millimeter. Now 16 mil is really too much. Maybe we can change it back. So in order to get this error out, so clearance, let's say through hole bad to through hole bad. Let's change this to 10 mil. Only this one. Apply, and let's click OK. And it's still less than 10 mil. So let's go back to the design rules. And let's specify this as 8 mil. Okay. Oh, 16 mil. Oh, okay. So we have something else. Design rules. Let's change everything to 8 mil and see. It's fine. It looks like uh, we'll take a look at it. So let's continue the routing. And always don't route to a trace, route into a bad or a via like that. This is the best of practices to branch from bad, not from trace. And also we'll talk about that in details in when we talk about signal integrity. So this goes in here, and also this one is routed into this. And this guy goes in here. So what left here? This one goes in here and we'll see this one now it's true that we have two layer bcb but we might be able to route everything in a single layer and but and so this one will go all the way here and now this is the five volt 
connect to the 5 volt in here and this 5 volt also connect to 5 volt in here and let's see what left so what we can do to fit this instead of connecting the 5 volt here we can connect the 5 volt to here and again always connect to a bad not now if you don't like this corner what you can back use the back button in your keyboard to release the last connection one by one so what we can do we can have this from here to here and it's connected now everything is done on one layer we don't we did not need to use the second layer but we need to use that for practice now let's connect this one I need this to be on the bottom because I don't want to go all the way from I can go from the here from here here and then I connect that now let's back 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 what is that let's switch to the bottom layer and now we don't have a problem to go over this and connect in here just for practice purpose now the board is done that's all the routing I need it's complete and let's save everything now what we need to do let's view the configuration let's view the component on the top and now let's move these designators and put them in order now we need to hide the traces because the traces are on the underneath the green or solder mask and then we have these on the top layer where we have the silk screen layer and now we need to organize our silk screen layer to do that you can if you come in here and try to select this you might be selecting the component and move it by mistake now to do that only allow to select text you can go click on the free space go to the properties and you have here selection filter Click on all object and all of them now are disabled and select only text now don't forget this because if you come here and now try to select this component you cannot select this component you only can select text you cannot select anything other than text now you might be working and forget about the filter and then try to select your component and it's not working you think something is wrong with Altium but no it's the filter make sure that when you are done select everything so you can have an access to all these components but for now let's select the text only now this is the queue now this is the designator when you do the assembly basically if you click on the 3d model this is what you will see the white one is the silk screen layer when you do the assembly you can um, use this silk screen layer or count on it to place the component and know the designator for each one or reference designator reference name for it so let's go back to the two layer and move these designators to the right place now if i run erc error uh, drc error now i will see a lot of problems let's do it before we move the designators let's show the layers and here we are done let's done go to design uh, tools design rule check now don't change these settings keep it as it is for now we'll talk about it later now we need something very quick as we said click on run design rule check here we go you have 200 violations 142 of them are silk screen to solder mask clearance you have problem with that and silk screen to silk screen basically these are the solder mask and these are the silk screen you have the silk screen over the solder mask because here we will have a hole and you have let's see it in 3d so in 3d let's hide the component you can go to the configuration view options and you have show 3d bodies off here you can show the component or hide them let's hide them look you have the silk screen or the designator over the hole or over the solder mask and solder base this is a problem now this should not be done and if you send your bcb as it is to the fabrication facility they will send it back they will tell you oh you have all these errors you need to fix them now let's switch back to the t 2d mode and try to move these designator to the right place so 
hide the traces because the traces are underneath all these layers you don't worry about them when you arrange your designators you only look for the uh, overlay layer so g1 is the connector this is the connector c1 is this so i can put it in here so basically when you select the designator look everything will be dimmed and your component will be highlighted look at this component is highlighted component to the to the rest so q2 is this one c2 is this one space to change the orientation of the designator let's see led1 so this is led1 led2 led3 4 5 and here we have r1 to remove them very quickly and arrange them to next to their components and you know the component because it's highlighted six seven eight don't get the component closed because this will be an error so if you get it over that you see here it says this is the drc online drc shows this is less than 10 mil you need to move it away and this still is then 10 mil now it's okay set nine and these are the leds designator now let's do these r12 this is d1 this is c3 r13 where is it? here is r13 this is q1 r11 and this is d2 space is for rotating the component again so this is led let's move these so we have them r14 r15 You can you can place them like that as well. It's much nicer since they are big. Okay, so the LEDs. The K letter in here indicates uh, the cathode for the LED, which is the negative side of the LED. Where are the LEDs? And now everything in place. Let's show the traces. Let's run the DRC again. And let's see. So we have less than that let's fix this see what what problems we have and we can close this we can look at the messages and here so it shows we have minimum solder mask silver oh okay this is part of the component because this is the silver solder mask silver we can change that in the drc we don't need that we a little bit exaggerated about the clearances for everything just to simplify it and to change that you need to go we forgot to change these rules go to silk screen clearance and change this to for now put it one mil and also solder mask clearance put this one for one mil because these libraries are from um, default libraries from altium all libraries uh, they are not optimized Let's design rule check. Let's check it again. And we have four left. Let's see. Let's close this report and let's take a look at the messages. So this is for Q1, Q1, Q2, Q2. And this is minimum uh, solder mask silver constraint. Okay, it's easy to fix. Also, let's go back to the design rule. And these under minimum solder mask silver. I remember we changed this to one and design 
tools, design rule check, and no errors. Everything looks great now. We don't have any problem with that. Let's see. Altium is freezing now. So we don't have any more errors. The last step we need to do, or maybe we still need to do the to add the bulligan or the cover pour into the board. But before we do that, we need to put an outline for the board. To put an outline, you go to into design, board shape, define from selected um or board shape, create primitives from board shape. So this has to go on the keep out layer. It's five mil is enough. And look now what will happen at the edge of the board. This basically will define the boundaries for the board. You see this, this basically define the edge of the board. So when you send it to the fabrication, they will know where to cut. This is the board. Now, the last point we need to add is uh, the cover pour to improve signal integrity and reduce the impedance to the ground and this is might not be important for this type of board this is very simple basic and low frequency but it's just to practice we can add it to the practice right now and to do that you go to tools and then you have polygon pores you can go to the polygon manager and create these pores or you can go right away to place and in the place you can polygon board in here and you will see the polygon board is active but now before you do that you click on tab always when you you have an active command and you click on tab you will go into the properties for that board now we know that the net we need to select the net always you connect your polygon board into the ground so this is a net we need to select and we need to have the polygon board on the top layer and bottom layer so we create that for the top first and let's do auto naming so it will be named automatically and here we will talk about these configuration for the fill mode of the polygon later on but for now specify the island for 500 square mil and the arc approximation for 0.5 mil and click on remove dead cover in here it's very important and bore over all same net object and this is uh, the, the settings you need it for now to get it to work now once these are done either you click enter or click on this pause meaning it's it's ready now you start from the corner of the board shift click shift space to change uh, the mood take it 90 degree go all the way to the other corner and space go back to the top corner and right click to release now you will see it's bored over the ground now come closer to the ground you see it's connecting with every single ground point on your pcb so where what about the clearances and spacing? These are specified in the rules in here. If you go back to the clearance, and this is goes under the advanced, you see body, body to trace, you have 8 mil, body to throw hole bed, you have 8 mil. Let's change these to 12. Look, track and 12. Now let's click OK. Now you have an error because it's not. 8 it's not it's not 12 it's 8 what you need to do you go back to tools body board and click on repour all now you see it's it's more spacing we have right now so don't forget whenever you change any parameters on the ball again you need to go back and repour it again otherwise you will get an error it will not be updated now how we can add pour on on the bottom layer as well so basically same thing you go to place you click on polygon board tab and you select the bottom layer from here and same thing everything will be the same go to the corner start from the corner 
you have the 90 degree go all the way to the other corner switch to 90 degree and go back to the same corner you started with release release the command and you have it connected to the green and also you have the spacing thin so this is a ground how can i know if this is a ground basically let's split the screen again so if we click on the ground you will see the high this will be the body again will be highlighted if you click on 5 volt this is the 5 volt trace is highlighted if you click on any trace it will be highlighted if you click on component also the component will be highlighted so let's close this schematic document what are other ways if you go to the bcb and here the bcb you can go to the nets select all nets and now you can see a list of the nets on your design if you click on the ground this is the ground if you click on the 5 volt will be highlighted and everything will be dimmed a little bit what if i want a different mask it if you click on mask and click on five volt you can see the red and everything is masked right now if you need something if you need it to zoom you can select from zoom from here for instance if you click on this net it will zoom in if you remove the zoom and click on the other net it will not zoom it you need to uh, navigate to it so this is very handy to see the nets and do review for the nets on your board and see what type of nets. So what else I can do? What you can do, you can come to the 5 volt in here, right click on it, change net color, and you can come in here and pick up a different color for this net. And when you select this, and it has now the orange color. How you can, and it's basically you are overriding the default color. You can click on F5 on your keyboard to remove the override, color override. So F5 will go back to the default. Another F5, you will remove it. So this is also a handy feature to differentiate between the words. Now, if you want to add a text um, here, let's select this text to be on. Always put the text on the top overlay, which is the silk screen. On the top layer, let's say by lead, for instance, lead. Of course, you can change the font if you need different font and whatever you can select that and you can put it in somewhere in here, for instance. And now let's take a look at the 3D model for this. If you click view 3D model, and this is the silk screen in white. The green one is the solder mask. You can see the components and the traces are covered. And these are the bad soldering bats where they are not covered with the solder mask because you need to solder these components. Basically, you will place the component from this top layer. Control F, you will flip flip it. Control F, you will flip it again. So if you click hold shift down, then you can use the right button on your mouse to rotate in the 3D dimension. Or if you have a 3D mouse, you can also do that. Zero, it will go if you click on zero on the keyboard, it will go to the default orientation. Key nine will rotate, key eight will you have the default with angle view, so zero. So, what we can do about these resistors, these are quarter watt resistor, right? What we can do, we can try to go into this website, it's called 3D Content Central and look for um, axial resistor and what we need we need a quarter watt this one so let's take this resistor for instance and see if it this fits well because we can measure the body in here so let's take a look at the spacing in here to get the spacing you go into report measure distance and click from here all the way to here so the spacing is 7.62 millimeter let's go back to the website what does it say it says 7.62 millimeter then this is the right body now you need to have an account this is a free account you can uh, create an account it's free you can log in now you come here and select the step file where is it here step remove these and keep this 2014 click on download 
download and let's say let's put it in the download folder close so we have it in here we go back to Altium Designer now what we want to do switch back to the 3D model or 3D view And now go to the properties and change the stand of height. Let's put 100 mil. Oh, this is too much. Maybe 50 mil. Let's see if there is any collagen. Oh, yeah. We a little bit more. Let's put 60 mil. Now it goes through the holes and it looks good. Uh, yeah, so this is 3D model tools. Reset error. So we can add this 3D model. Same thing with the cap. So you can add these now, or you can go to the library for this component and edit this library and add this 3D model to the library right away. This is another way to do it. But this is just something quick, and now the BCB is ready. What we can do next, we need to generate the fabrication files and send these files to the fabrication company to do that. So how we can do that, right click on here, add new, you need to add output job file. The output job file is basically an automated uh, process to create your files. And here you go under fabrication outputs, click on it, Gerber files for our BCB documents and also click on it you need to have the drills for this BCB as well now you need to configure these these uh, Gerber files and drawings now select multimeter uh, millimeter and 4 to 4 you need to select the layer we have the top layer and also we have the bottom layers we need to select because two layer BCB and don't forget the keep out layer where you have the outline of the board that's all you need to select if you have any mechanical layers you need to print as well you can select but for um, we put uh, the text on the top overlay so we are fine with that so okay now for the drill you don't need to do much about it it's already there and it's configured drill drawing And you need to add Gerber files, NC drill files. You don't need a drill drawing. We don't want to print a drill drawing. Let's remove it. So we need NC drill files. These are also millimeter, keep it four to four, and that's it. Now you click on the folder structure, you click on the enable in here, and when you click generate content this will automatically be generated but before we do that uh, we don't have a surface mount component to do an assembly otherwise we would add an a big and blaze machine but we don't have a surface mount so it's only the fabrication files in addition to the bill of material so let's generate the fabrication files in here and now these are the trails and these are the, the holes we have and the files are generated now and they are in the default folder where this project is saved we can let's go to the folder this is a project so basically the history this is a history tracking history of your changes to the bcb if if you wanted to go back to um go back and before the changes you have made so you can remove these if you don't want to go back uh, logs it's basically the logs when you started working on schematic and bcb it's log file so the output we don't have read, uh, the output for this project in here so you have the gerber files these are the gerber files 
and basically what you want to send you need to back these files and everything else is additional files like error reports and rules and stuff like that the drill files are these as well so what you need you just dip these files and you call it stable for instance and these are ready right now in here and if you know the dimensions of the board so let's save the job file as well so you need to measure the dimension of the board so report measure you start from the corner all the way to the other corner so your board is basically around 85 millimeter by 57 millimeter 0.5 so you go to bcb way and bcb instant cut so if you want it's one design so 84.7 in the x dimension 84.7 and 57.4 57.4 and we need 10 pieces two layers and we have 0 0.3 6.6 .6, and all these are good calculate this is the cost if you add it to the card uh, you need to have an account you need to create an email let's say let's create whatever test to show you when you need to upload the files um, it's not registered so they will require you to register where you then they will ask you to upload the fabrication files and all that you need is to upload this the zip file we had and it's ready that's it they will send you your bcb after a while and you need to start the assembly now i need to stop at this point it's really long session i did not expect it will take that much time and i need to dedicate a different session for the surface mount components now this is very a brief um, like introduction about creating a board from A to Z using through hole components and as I said earlier you might not be using through hole components in, in your future designs uh, unless you are using like um, industrial electronics component with high power or you are using connector through hole connectors but it's good for you to have some practice around through hole components and what you need to do is to recreate this design and if you want to challenge yourself a little bit about it try to stagger these leds where you have one green one red one green one red one green one red and try to re recreate the same same board and same design at uh, your machine now in the next session i will go through the same design but uh, with using uh, surface mount components and we will dig deep into more details and more features in Altium Designer and we will start following the design flow we talked about in this session in details in, in the next session and hope that's helped and see you in the next session. Thank you all.